Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Pierce Dispatch. I'm here with Dave McAllis, the Regional Vice President of Sales for the Northeast. Dave, thanks yeah, for joining me. Yeah, I'm happy me. to be here. Thank you. Can you tell me about yourself and your background with Pierce? Uh, yeah, thanks for that. I've been with Pierce since 2008, so 16 years in the role of Northeast Region uh, Oversight with our D1 network. And uh, I would say prior to Pierce and even years ago on, the, on my own fire department, uh, I've just spent a lot of time on aerial devices, aerial ladders, aerial platforms. So it's a personal passion of mine. So I was glad to be part of today. Absolutely. So could you tell me, what is the overall purpose of an aerial within a fleet? Yeah, the main responsibility of an aerial ladder crew in a fire department uh, at all times is first priority is life safety, life safety, rescue. Uh, you can imagine it two in the morning, a, a working fire, the ladder truck needs to be the first to pull up to the scene and they should have priority on the fire ground just in case civilians need to be rescued, whether it be out of a window or off a roof. So that's always the number one priority of a ladder crew, no matter which customer we have out here, a small village or a suburb, or even a large city, that's the number one priority. Once those priorities are answered and if the rescues are made or if they don't need rescue, then the other main goal of an aerial crew is to get on the roof and ventilate or ventilate windows. It's critical to get the heat out of the building to allow the engine companies and their comrades to start extinguishing the fire. So if I put it in priorities, it would be life rescue, uh, ventilation, and then most ladder trucks, depending on what region of the country, a lot of aerial trucks also carry rescue tools and utility tools. They may respond to MVAs out my way, a car crash. They may be in charge of the scene with rescue tools. If a community doesn't run a heavy rescue, a lot of times the ladder truck is their utility rescue truck. And lastly, they carry salvage equipment. So when the fire's out, you'll hear the term salvage covers and whatnot. They usually help help the civilians take care of the belongings and whatnot in a burnt out residence. Sure. You broke that down very clear. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. So can you tell me what are important factors that departments should consider when they're designing an aerial? Yeah, I think it, uh, it's basically around their own community needs. Uh, we like to say when a department visits Pierce or uh, is getting ready to purchase a truck, it's critical that they worry about just their own individual community needs. So in the case of some suburbs, uh, it's not uncommon to see a quint device. So a uh, department and their committee may decide we want an aerial device, but it also has to have pump and water on board. And if that's the case, how much of a hose bed do we require? What type of hose are you carrying? How does that impact the ground ladders, et cetera? So it, sometimes it's a fine line balance of how much equipment we want to put on a truck. One of the things we specialize in is how um, maneuverable and short can we make the truck if you're in a tight town or a tight community with one-way streets and traffic challenges or it's a larger city if it's a tandem truck then you can make the body longer even store more equipment ground ladders are a, a personal passion of mine there's a lot of ground ladder options that we offer so i think our dealer network and our sales reps do a great job of sitting down and qualifying what the departments are looking for and then giving them options and showing them what else is uh, popular, uh, what other trucks have been sold by Pierce and create the foundation. And then from there, own in on which of the dozen designs we offer on aerials that might best meet their needs. Yeah, that answer really underlines the importance of having that relationship with your dealer and being able to really lean back on what is it we need this apparatus to do for us. Yeah, we're particularly proud of the deal network we have. And a lot of the sales reps that I work with, especially in my region, they're savvy. They understand the customer's needs. They dig in deep. They find out what the best options are, and then they do the best job they can about meeting the needs. So there's many different types of aerials. Can you break it down? What's an aerial ladder, platform, tower, tiller? Sure, a wide variety of aerials. Typically, when you mention the word ladder, a ladder is an open truss device that has rungs and handrails, and you see the firefighters uh, walking up there, climbing up there. Typically, when we mention ladder truck, it's a rear-mounted turntable, and the tip of the ladder is over the cab. So as you're driving down the street, that's recognized as a rear-mount ladder truck. Very typical in all the northeast cities and actually across the country. So rear-mount ladders are very popular. We get into a, a term of platform or tower. Uh, I'm going to give you a twofold answer. 
in our Pierce manufacturing world, we, we know that a platform for us is our 100 foot path, a Pierce aerial platform. And again, that's a rear mount turntable and the basket is over the cab of the truck. So as the driver is heading down the street, he's looking up at the bottom of his, of his platform. Subsequently, our tower truck is our 100 foot tower introduced in 2018, a great product. It's a mid mount pedestal operation with the platform at the rear of the truck up on the body. So it's very short design and compact. However, to most civilians, even firefighters, the term sometimes platform and tower can be intertwined a little bit. It, it basically means that there is a basket or a cage at the tip of the area where the firefighters can work out of in a much more safer environment. Mm -hmm. so, so getting up on steep roofs and whatnot, you can ride in the platform itself. Sure. And let's dive into Tiller next. Yeah. The Tillers is a great subject. They're a fun truck, as odd as that sounds. A tractor-drawn aerial or a TDA is a Tiller. A tractor-drawn aerial is the same exact ladder truck we were talking about being a rear mount, but it's mounted on a trailer and it's being pulled to the scene by the tractor or the chassis of the truck. The benefit of a Tiller is it has a steering axle, obviously both in the front, but one in the rear. So it's a two-man drive, typically a three- to four-man ladder truck. They can be up to 60 feet long, but when you have a talented person on the back of a tiller, they're extremely maneuverable and fun to watch in different cities. They definitely snake around the corners they and do. everything. I've seen the videos. It's amazing. So why would a department include or not include a pump and a tank on their aerial? Sure. We mentioned before the difference between customers and the size of their communities. Some larger cities run truck companies, which do not include a pump and tank. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of suburbs, even the one I live in, they decide to run a Quint. It's more efficient for them. They can have a two to three man response and they can take care of their aerial needs, or they can also be dispatched to a car fire or other event. They can help work with the engine companies to do some fire suppression when needed. So overall, it's just a matter of manpower meaning how many people are assigned to the truck and how they choose to fight fire, how they choose to respond in their given city. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So could you tell me how aerials compare across different climates and geographies? Uh, yeah, sure. I think it's interesting that just this week we're seeing fire departments here in Appleton that are literally coast to coast. And what I typically tell people is the aerial device, the hardware, nothing changes on the surface. Interesting to me that we sell aerial devices in the northernmost climate in Alaska, and we can sell uh, aerial devices that serve down in the extreme heat in the southwest all at the same time. The aerial device doesn't change. However, the way the hydraulic oil operates the aerial, the hydraulic oil powers the aerial up and down, rotates it. So based on climate, cold climate may just use a different viscosity compared to an extremely warm climate. So I liken it to our HVAC systems. In New England, you may not require the super duty air conditioner system that you'd require down in the Phoenix region. So aerials are the same. They just run differently and use different viscosity fluids. Okay. So it's a best practice for a department to know exactly what's going in every spot of their aerial compartments or leave room for growth and find out what goes where when it comes home. Wow, that's a critical question that we spend a lot of time downstairs with engineering, especially during pre-builds. Again, I go back to our deal network and, and our sales reps. Their main responsibility is to work with committees and try to lay out as much in advance as they can for a smooth delivery. A lot of our sales reps do, I call it inventory control. They're keeping track of what the department intends to store. We talked about rescue tools, ground ladders, hand tools. A lot of our sales reps will plan out rollout trays, compartment shelves, either a hinged or a, a rollout tool board. And the end result is an extremely organized compartment, which is critical to the fire department. They just don't want to put heavy rescue tools in a locker and shut the door and hope that everything arrives upright. So it's a tender subject, but our people do a great job working in advance to make for a smooth delivery and smooth storage. Yes. And that is a balancing act of how much room do we leave for future growth? So when you think about growing communities, what do they need to do? Wow. I'd almost reverse the question a little bit. And I'll just date myself that back in my time, the equipment was larger and more sizable and more difficult to store. 
So back in my time, it was a smoke ejector that's turned into a, what we call now a PPV. It's one fourth the size and lighter and runs on batteries and doesn't require the storage space. So in that vein, we've done a great job by creating compartment space and storing equipment like that. We recently worked with one department that had, uh, are now into advanced uh, EMTs, paramedics ride in the truck. Paramedics have different needs for EMS lockers, AED devices, IV fluids. Sometimes those need to be in heated lockers. So it's critical to design the inside of the cab, right, for this department. So again, we go back to our sales reps. Their job is to work with the department, see what the department's needs are, plan for the future, and try to equip the truck best as possible. Absolutely. All right. Could you tell me what are some design suggestions departments can make to enhance the effectiveness of their aerial? Uh, wow. Your effectiveness in the fire ground is an efficient aerial. How can we make our aerial more efficient? We find that one thing that the firefighters appreciate and one thing we're particularly proud of is the aerial speeds on our ascendant line. The ascendant line offers a very quick jack setup. The firefighters are off the ground faster. The aerial speeds are roughly 35 to 40% faster than traditional aerials. And it puts the firefighters in the window faster, on the roof line faster. And in my experience, efficiency is speed. So now I want to transition a little bit. Can you tell me about some of your most memorable experiences with customers? Uh, well, twofold. I think uh, I would talk about deliveries first and uh, maybe some demo work second. Things that come to mind, uh, last year we got to deliver a 100-foot ladder truck to Salem, Massachusetts, and we delivered it in October. So you can imagine uh, delivering a ladder truck to Salem, uh, a city that which was established in 1626. Some very older and low fire station doors. But you can imagine just the fun of Salem in October. Everybody should get there once. It's a great city. But delivering a new truck there was a fun event. Sure. Providence was an interesting order that our, our dealer in New England, Allegiance, they worked very hard to sell them four ladder trucks a couple of years ago. And Providence, again, has a, has a series of older fire stations with, with lentils that cannot be modified. And they have very tight, very low door requirements. We were leading into this with our engineering department, literally measuring the truck down to every eighth of an inch, every eighth of an inch counted. So that was an interesting delivery day. We were a little nervous at first, but we squeaked in just fine. We got some great photos of our delivery day there. So that was fun. <laughs> and they fed. Um, yeah, and they <laughs> did, all four of them. And then finally, just a memorable delivery a couple of years ago in a place called New Hartford uh, by Utica, New York, just a Great department, great leader with Chief Tom Bolanowski. He has about 75 or 80 active members. And delivery day there was a very cold uh, Saturday. And they received us well. We did some cold weather training. And they had a great big Italian feast afterwards, a big banquet. So it was just left there with a great feeling of uh, a good, satisfied customer. I can't imagine the experiences and the stories that you have based off of these unique deliveries and all these places you get to visit and yeah. the firefighters you get to meet. It's fun. I like history and the Northeast region is full of history. I would close with just two demos that we did. I got to uh, do some tower demo work with uh, Firematic, our dealer in New York State. And we went to Cooperstown, home of the Baseball Hall of Fame. And that's exactly where they wanted us to demo. They brought us on the hallowed grounds of the Hall of Fame. And we did demo work there on a beautiful spring night. Again, a nice, uh, quaint, super quaint community in the Finger Lake region. And uh, great people. And it uh, turned out to be great customers. So delivery there was, was fun and demo time. And then lastly, just a memorable demo in southern New Jersey, a place called Choose Landing, we had a 100-foot tower demo. The department committee was concerned because they just recently put up a new combined assisted living facility, but it was set back quite a bit from the road and it was up on a hill. And technically, it was just out of reach of the current aerial they were using. So when they were shopping, one of the concerns was, can we stretch out and reach that building? And they, we did a good setup there. And one of the members had a range finder, a handheld range finder. And we know that our 100 foot tower has 93 feet of reach and the range finder showed 91 and a half feet of reach. So we were gone and we went right up to the gutter line. We're on the roof, we're on the patios, we're on all the windows and proud to say they, they purchased a truck from us afterwards. So that was a, that was a great demo. I can't imagine just down to just 
the final measurements to make that decision. And yeah. Pierce was able to. It was a game up. of game of inches. So thank God he had that range finder. <laughs> That's incredible. Uh, yes. Well, thank yeah. you for sharing that. And thank you for sharing everything you did about aerials. I know this is going to be a great resource for any customers that are looking to learn more. Good. No, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. 